One thing you have to conclude, since 2007, almost everything's gotten worse. And it's getting better at a much less rapid rate than in previous recessions. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, changing fortunes. Are more Americans teetering at poverty's edge? According to the 2010 census, America's middle class is shrinking and nearly half the population is classified as either poor or low income. Factors leading to poverty have remained strong and many Americans find that they are just one calamity away from impoverishment. Poverty, notes senior fellow Ron Haskins, has shown great if unfortunate staying power. The idea, Ron, that nearly half of all Americans are either teetering on the edge of poverty or a low income life is really quite sobering. There's no such thing as one number that will cover every aspect of financial well-being. Uh, poverty is a good indication that there are problems at the bottom. Um, low income, though, really doesn't have any technical meaning. You could define it to mean whatever you want it to. Um, there certainly are a lot of Americans who are in jeopardy of falling off a cliff <clears throat> if they lose their job. In fact, I'd say, in that case, I'd say it's way more than 50 percent. So to get a more complete picture, it's useful to look at the increase in poverty rates or the increase um, um, in the number of people slipping into a low income lifestyle, as well as the loss of wealth in this country. The poverty measure tells us a lot about what's happening at the bottom. A recent report uh, from the Federal Reserve on wealth tells us something else. Now, wealth is distinct from poverty, and we found out that, not surprisingly, that wealth has taken a big hit over the past actually since maybe 2007. The, the, their report was 2007 to 2010. And the Federal Reserve found that the average American had lost 40 percent of their wealth over that three-year period. That's, that, that's amazing. And it's primarily because of housing. And looking at the unemployment rate in the country really helps to clarify things. It doesn't tell you the status of a family, but it tells you something about the economy and it tells you about the likely well-being of American families. When unemployment rate is high, a lot of people are really scrambling and some people are really suffering and some people lose their house and lose things that they had managed to pay for when they had a job. So the unemployment rate also is enormous compared to previous recessions and there are more sophisticated numbers like the average time until you find another job. That number is way up. Another interesting number is the percentage of job openings uh, per uh, person, per job seeker. And that number is very, very high. So unemployment's a big problem. Well took a real hit. The poverty rate did go up. But I would say this, the government did a lot to help people. Individual responsibility, the choices we make about our lives, really can play a role in our economic status. Is that right? In general, if you look at any given moment at the population, people who followed three fairly basic rules, finish high school at least, get a job, and get married and wait till 21 before you have a baby, your chances of being in poverty are very close to zero. There's something like two or three percent, and changes a little bit from year to year. Uh, and your chances of making a middle class defined as 50,000 or more are well over 70 percent. And those are individual choices too. So now, even a person in that situation, if you had a big recession like we had now, they could fall into poverty. But if you followed them over time, you would find that they got out pretty quickly, they'd find a new job, and they would get themselves out of poverty pretty quickly. What's intriguing to note is wages in this country, and in some sectors, they haven't really grown in the last 30 years. Wages declined starting in roughly um, 1970. They declined consistently for about a decade and a half, and then they recovered. But after three decades, wages at the 10 percentile are right where they were three decades ago. I mean, that's an amazing story that if you depended on wages, you would not be any better off today than you were three decades ago. Just taking inflation into account. 
So wages at the bottom are a real problem, and I think this reflects what we've already talked about, that is the importance of education. Most of the people down there at the bottom have low education. And people who are recent high school graduates or dropouts of high school in the last, say, 10 years, they would be even, they would cluster at the bottom because a lot of people that have only a high school degree and they're now 35 or 40 or 45 or 50, they have a long work history and to some extent that can make up, you know, for their poor education history. So, so wages at the bottom are a big problem. There are some in this country who say that we are waging not so much a war on poverty as a war on the poor. Do you agree with that? We now spend between the federal government and state government about almost a trillion dollars. In fact, I think it's a little, we don't have completely accurate numbers, but I think there's every reason to think it's over a trillion. Um, you can show very clearly it's over 950 billion, and that number has gone up almost every year. So the idea that we've had assaults on, on poverty, which are like, I mean, on, on the poor, is just, it, people need to clarify more what they mean because government spending has really helped people. And Ron, you've argued that because of the dismal state of the nation's bottom line, there are going to have to be cuts made to some programs for the poor. We now face the worst fiscal problem in our history. We are going to have to cut programs. And I have written that I think we should make some cuts in programs for the poor because they've increased so rapidly and it's, you know, it's say $800 billion of federal money in those programs and you can't just ignore that. And I think the spirit of the enterprise has to be everybody sacrifices, including low-income families. And we can do that in a way that will be the least harmful, but everybody's going to have to pony up. Everybody in the society, every sector. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brooklyn's events, and search our directory of experts. All from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.